Muslim violent extremism. What causes it, and how much of a threat is it to UK national security? Counterterrorism units across the UK have made more arrests within the first three months of this year than they did throughout the whole of 2013. The recent conviction of 11 men from Birmingham who planned to blow up the ball ring is a testament to the reality of terrorism within the UK. And there are some reports that suggest that over 150,000 people have either been killed or seriously injured as a result of Muslim violent extremism since 9-11. That translates as approximately 31 people every single day, or about two people every hour. As a result of these kind of statistics, a lot of research has been conducted into the causes of Muslim violent extremism. And factors such as social isolation, economic deprivation, education underachievement, Muslim identity crisis have all been highlighted as possible factors. And as a result, intervention programs have been developed to try and curb its appeal. But for a number of reasons, these intervention programs have largely proven to be unsuccessful. And the only real result that they've provided is that they've stigmatized Muslim communities en masse. Political narrative is something that's also been attributed as a possible cause. After all, on the 20th of September, George W. Bush held the entire world to account when he initiated the war on terror, stating you're either with us or you're with the terrorists. This us versus them paradigm was picked up and exploited by individuals like Osama bin Laden, who stated this isn't a war on terror. And they're not asking you to choose between democracy and terrorism. Rather, this is a war on Islam, and they're forcing you to choose between your faith and your citizenship. But as valuable as all of this research and information is, the fundamental question remains unanswered. What causes Muslim violent extremism? In my PhD research, I focus on the narrative that's utilized by radical extremists like bin Laden to identify the theological points that's contained within their narrative. I want to be able to understand if it is the theology or the narrative that propels an individual into a state of self-sacrifice. Towards the end of my research, I introduce a cognitive behavioral perspective with a view to developing a theoretical framework for a credible intervention program by understanding the impact that theological stimuli have on the decision-making process. Ladies and gents, my research will contribute towards shaping government counterterrorism strategies. It will inform intervention programs that will ultimately save lives. It will promote social cohesion. It will reduce anti-Muslim hate crime in the wake of a terrorist incident. The costs of failing to identify the causes of Muslim violent extremism are indeed grave. But perhaps this point is best illustrated through the following statement made by Michael Adebalajo <laughs> shortly after he murdered Drummer Lee Rigby on the streets of Woolwich. And this is the thought that I'd like to leave you with, if I may. He states, I swear by almighty Allah, we will never stop fighting you until you leave us alone. You people will never be safe. Thank you for your time.